Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary, and I wanna thank you all for taking this class with me today. Uh, we are going to be painting this dog bank and the cat bank. So I would like to have you start by pulling the stoppers out of the bottom, because we don't wanna paint the stoppers. And they're a little difficult to pull out, so if you have a parent there, that can help you pull it out. If not, don't worry about it, you could leave it in and do it at another time the bottom as long as we get the top painted <clears throat> excuse me today so you have your paints you have your brushes i'm going to work with the same brushes and the same paints oh, mine are in big big bottles though but i gave you them i believe in the strip so we're we're going to first start by putting the main color on the pieces i'll start with the cat and then we'll go to the dog okay now if you're not working on the cat you have the dog just fast forward the video and um, you can just pick up on the dog. But if you want to watch both, feel free. I'd love to have you here. And um, this is so nice for the library to allow me to come into your homes and uh, paint these banks. So let's get started. We're going to start with the mustard color that I gave you. So we're going to put that on the entire cat. Okay. And I do that because if we don't paint the whole piece in one color, you have too many white spots showing. So with the dog, we'll probably paint the whole piece in the brown. And with the cat, we'll paint the whole piece in the mustard color. Now, you don't have to do the mustard color on the cat. Uh, if you have a cat that's gray and white and black, and what you can do whatever you want. It's your piece. And um, it's up to you what colors you want to paint. But because I did the sample like this, I'm going to proceed with showing you how to do this. And then, like I said, you can do whatever colors you want. If you have any questions, you have my email. Your parents can email me and I will try to help you out with anything that you know you, you need to know on the piece. If you don't have colors in the kits that I gave you that you wanna use, you can go to Michael's and you can pick up, it's, it's just a water-based acrylic paints that we're using today. So let's get started and if you can, and if the stopper is out, I always start on the bottom because then it dries and then I could stand it up, okay? But once you have it wet here, it's hard to hold it and turn it over. So what we'll do is we'll start with the mustard color and we'll paint that on the bottom. Now, I don't want you to glob the paint on. The paint, the brush should just have a little bit of paint in it. And before you dip for more paint in your brush, make sure you spread this paint out as far as it'll go. That's how it dries fast. If you just keep scooping up paint and putting it on the piece, it will never dry. If you see, I just keep going back and forth over it until it's dry. Then I'll dip for more paint, okay? A lot of people want to, you know, really scoop the paint up and, and put a lot of it on, and it's not good. If it's too heavy, that's not good. And even if you can see through the color, you can go back and do a second coat, but just do not put too much on at one time because it will never dry, and we have to put other colors over it, so you really need it to be dry. But now you see I have the bottom done, and while the bottom is drying, I'll hold it in my hand and start working my way up the cat. And again, spread it out as far as it'll go. And get in those little nooks and crannies in between his toes. Well, actually, they're paws, right? Because we don't want to see any white spots. That's why we do this entire piece in one color. It gives a neater look, and then whatever you do over the top of it is up to you. You could do polka dots. I mean, it's a ceramic piece. It's not a real animal. Well, you could do it like your animal if you have one, but you can be creative with it. I mean, I just give you a suggestion by doing, doing the sample and working on the piece while you are, but it's your piece and you're the artist, so you can do whatever you want. But you see how many times I keep going over it to keep it nice and smooth and dry in it. And look how fast the bottom is dry already. As long as you pull that color out and you don't put it on heavy, it dries really fast. It's the first time I'm using these brushes that I gave you. And it's really nice. It um, goes on really well. This, I use the square, the flat. They call this a, a square shader brush. I use this to put the color on because it's flat and it kind of smooths the paint out better than the round one. And then we can use the round one. We do the stripes and the nose and, and little detail. And I'll show you how to do the eyes at the end also. That's real easy. 
all these little tricks I've learned over all the years I've been in business. Try to pass them on to you. Now you will be able to see this video on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel and it's under Rosemary's Ceramics and you will be able to look up this video like that and I'm sure the library is also going to tell you how you can get hold of the video. But like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I will answer anything. I mean, look how fast it dries. I can touch it almost immediately when you pull it out. But if you put your paint on and you put it on like this and you leave it like that, that will never dry. You must work out all those ridges in the paint, all those wet, wet spots there. Work them out, pull them out. Okay, so I'm holding him by his ears because I figured I'd do his ears last. and smooth like I said because the brush is small it does take a while to do it but we're in no hurry so just take your time and if I'm working too fast all you have to do is just pause the video and you can pick up on it again when you're ready to, to move forward to move on I try to get into the little slot too because I don't want to see the white showing in the bank slot. So just get in there with a little bit of paint and then smooth it out. Okay, getting there. I hope everybody is having a good time painting. cute. He's looking cute. I'll put him over there so you can see this better what I'm doing. You'll find also that the paint goes a very long way. So just spread it out and you have plenty of paint. I, I didn't even fill up this section of the of the palette and I still have more than half of what I've put in there. Now, I want people ask me this, even though I say put the color on the entire piece, even where the pink is going to go. Just put the color over everything, even where the only did with a brown. All the other colors go on top of the base color. And again, that's so that you don't have any white spots. You want to just keep checking it and make sure there's no white spots. Just keep turning it upside down. And look at it, and if it's a little light in spots, you can go over it. I just keep double checking as I go around, do a little extra here because this looks a little light here. So now I have to hold it somewhere, and it's a little wet. Okay, this is dry back here. So I have color on the entire cat. So if you don't, like I said, just pause the video and when you're finished and you have the complete cat covered in the color that you chose to use, then you can put the video back on again, but I'll move on. Okay, now another thing, oops, I see a spot. Another thing that's important is washing your brushes. 
Now you wanna keep these brushes in good condition because you could use them over and over again. So when you're finished, you wash them with soap and water and don't smash your brushes in the bottom of a water bowl. I had asked you to have a water bowl. I never smash them in the bottom. I go back and forth. Try to keep the shape of the brush. And until I can go and wash it in the sink with soap, even though I do this, I wash it with soap later. Of course, I didn't get a paper towel, but I'll just use my little mat that I have here. And I usually lay it on the top of the bowl like this. I don't leave it laying in water because the glue can separate you know, in here and to brush my floor apart. So what I do is I just swish it in the water. I lay it on the top until I can take it to the sink and wash it with soap later on or lay it on your towel. Okay, so now we're going to do the brown stripes. Now, they don't have to be stripes. Like I said, this is your piece and you can do whatever you want with it. And you don't need much paint to do this. So I'm gonna take the round brush. That's this other one that I gave you. And we're just gonna pick up some of the brown. You could, you could fill up that brush with the brown. And just, okay, let's see. We'll lay it down here and just lay it down and do a nice wide stripe. Okay, now that didn't fill in all the way, but I'll go back to it. I'm just gonna do the three stripes first. Then I'll go back when they're a little drier and I'll go over them again. Now I'll go back to the top because it looks like it's pretty dry. It dries very fast. It's that one. It's that one. And that one. I see. I have the stripes on there. And now you have to watch it. You don't put your hand in them when you go and do the other side. So his ears are a good place to hold them. And I'll do the stripes on this side. This is really a good brush. Doing nice stripes, although I just scooped that one up a little bit. There's no mistakes in ceramics. If you make a mistake and you don't like the way something looks, just let it dry and then go back over it with your base coat, like mine would be the mustard color. But you can't do it while it's wet because if I tried to put the mustard on that while it was wet, everything would push together and you'd have a big mess. So if you go out of the lines, let it dry and then go back with another color to touch it up. And I see, I see little spots that I missed with the mustard color. So right now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the mustard color and go back on the areas that are dry. Okay, so I have my stripes in. All right. So now we're going to take pink and we're going to do his nose and his ears. I might have a little different pink here than I gave you, but it doesn't really matter. Whoops. Okay, a little bit of pink. So I think I'm going to take my bigger flatter brush now and paint in the ears. Okay, you don't want a lot of paint in the brush. So even though I put paint in the brush, I kind of blot it. And my brush is a little wet, so I'm trying to get some of the water out of there. You want to make sure your brush is pretty dry. And then I just work some of the pink into the hairs of the brush. I don't go from the pink to the piece because we're doing such a little area now, there's nowhere to spread it out. So you want to make sure that you don't have a lot in the brush. And you can kind of pounce it in there, like up and down, like so. See, that my brush is a little wet, so it's not going on as well as it should. I want to get all that water out of the brush. I got a little bit in there. So I just, what I'll do is I'll let it dry and go back and do it a second time. Pounce, whoops, let me hold on to him this way. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, and then dry I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do it a second time and the second every time you do something a second time the color is much more vivid yeah I think I like the pink I gave you better this one's a little light but it shows and like I said you could just keep going over it and over it see the pink in the ears and now for the nose and the tongue I'm gonna to just take my pointy brush put a little bit of paint on it and paint the nose It's hard for me to paint and show you 
I have to turn it around after I'm done with it because it's, I can't paint like this. So <laughs> paint there. And then there's a little bit, let's see if I can do this one so you could see under the tongue, under the snout on his tongue. Okay. A little bit there, right? Is that what I have? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to go to the black. Now be very careful with the black because black can really make a mess of your piece if you put too much in your brush. You really don't want to have too much black in your brush because it can run, especially if your brush is wet. So make sure, again, swish it, dry it. And when you dry it, roll it to a nice point because this brush has a beautiful point. So just roll it to a nice point, okay? And we're gonna do his little, oh, for, let's do the feet first. So put the paint in the brush and roll it. I wanna show you this. Put your paint in your brush and then roll it to a point. Look at the beautiful point on that brush and that will give you nice lines when you paint. So we're gonna do it between his paws. See if I can aim it to you so you can see what I'm doing. Start at the top and just go down. If you need more, you pick up a little more, roll it to a point again. And just keep doing in between all of the pores. That gives a definition, makes them look a little bit more detailed. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to do his little outline on his nose and his mouth, and then I'll show you how to do the dots. Don't do the dots now because the dots are done a little differently. So we'll just do the outline on his nose and the line down the middle to the mouth. Looks like a V under his nose, and then a line, and then there's an upside down V on top of his mouth. Okay. Now, I'm gonna wash my brush out, and I'm gonna take the bigger brush, the flat brush, and we're going to use the handle of the brush, this part, the back end, not the hairs, the back end. And you dip into the black, and you do your eyes. You see that? Okay, it does a perfect circle, and you don't have to do it with the hairs of the brush. Back end of the brush. And we're going to do the same thing for the little dots on the side of his nose, which are supposed to be like freckles, uh, freckles, I don't think cats have freckles, uh, like whiskers. So let's do those. And I have one, two, three, I have four of them, but it's up to you how many you want to do. But with the back end of the brush, see that? Back end of the brush. And it's so simple and it makes them nice and puts the right amount of paint in the brush. There you go. Now, he's done a, the same way I did that first one. Oh no, I did, I did stripes on the top. Oh, I missed my stripes on the top. Okay, so we'll go back and I'll go do my stripes across his head. And this is just from, I went over each eye as a guide, right above his eye, and then one in the middle. That leads down to the slot like that, and then one above the other eye. And like I said, there's no right or wrong with this. Animals are all different, they're all different colors. No two animals' markings are exactly the same. So there you go. Now, if you wanted to put a little bit on his tail, I didn't do on that. You could also do the top of his tail here, put a little color on there. If you wanna use a different color, you can. Because in the kits that I gave you, I put enough colors to do the cat and the dog so you all have the same colors. Okay, that's cute with a little bit on the tail. Now this one, I didn't do that. And this one I did. So like I said, you can add 
to the piece however you want. But remember, the back end of the brush, the handle, and it's just a dip in and a dot. It's just very simple to do and very easy. And you also now can go back and you can fix anything that you want to fix as long as it's dry. Just remember, make sure that the color is dry. All right, and then we finished him. So now I'll move on to the doggy. I love doggies. We'll put the little kitty cat over here. And we'll put the dog in the front so we can see the dog. So now on the dog, we're going to do the brown. Now I know to say to put it on everything, but if you don't put it on the snout, the, the, it can go where the black is going because black covers everything. It'll cover the brown, it'll cover whatever. The white's a little harder to cover. So what I would do is try not to do the snout right now. Okay, so try to stay away from it. But if you get it on it, we just do a few more coats of the white later on. Okay, so now we're gonna do the brown. And again, we start with the bottom. Pull it out. That's how it dries fast if you pull it out. Nice and smooth. And then as soon as I have the bottom done, I work my way up the sides. I just keep going back and forth before I dip for more paint to make sure that it's spread out. That's one of the most important things that I can teach you is not to keep globbing paint on. It will never dry, and then you can't put color over color. See how dry that is? It's almost dry to the touch when you pull it out properly. Okay, so now I'll hold it in my hand and until that bottom really dries well, and then I'll start working my way up. Start with his paws. You can start anywhere you'd like. So I hope that all of you were able to fill all these banks up with a lot of money and then you could get anything that you would like by saving. And again, just keep going back and forth until it's smooth and dry. And even if it's a little light in a spot, move on. And then you go back to it when it's dry to go over it a little bit more to get a little more solid coverage. I love painting ceramics and I hope that you do too. I hope all of you enjoy doing this. I've been doing ceramics for a very, very long time and I'm still not tired of it. Many, many years. I had a store for 30 years and now I work from my home, just like you're working from your home now. You really don't have to be an artist to do ceramics. There's something for everybody in ceramics. You can hand paint if you're creative, or you can do simple things. Now I'm working my way up. I know that the bottom is dry now, so I could stand it up on the bottom. I'm back touching up little white spots that I have. And the dog doesn't have to be brown either. I mean, you could use the mustard on the dog if you have a golden retriever or um, any other kind of dog. We have the white and the black if you have something in the Dalmatian family, all these um, little, little multi poos and stuff, you, you know, poodles and whatever. So you can do white and black. Now, when you do that, always do the, the lightest color first because black will cover everything. So always do your lightest color first. And even though I'm using a dark color, that is pretty much my lightest color on the whole piece except for the snout. So the black will go right over the top of the brown if I get it on there. And 
again, make sure you get into that little slot where your money's going to go. So now I want to move around to the front. He doesn't have ears that stick up that I can hold on to easily. So I just put my fingers on the outside of his ears and hold him like that. But as long as you put it on smoothly, it should, it should be drying. Oh, I almost forgot to have to stay away from the snout. And this brush is very good for doing that. Just lay your brush down here and then scoop it around and see how nicely that goes on. Just lay the brush down and scoop it around. And then smooth it out. And actually, we don't even have to go over the ears. I'll go right onto them a little bit because I don't want white spots. So I'll make sure that I get up into them. So when I do the black, the black will come down over the little bit of brown that I did on the edge. It's just the snout you want to try to keep white. It won't hurt if it goes on his nose here either because the black is gonna go on his nose. And if you're not comfortable using this flat brush, you can take the small brush and edge around. And I'll just show you how. Just take your little brush and just edge around his snout. Okay, see that's, that went on really well too. So you can use either brush, whatever you're comfortable with. Always make sure when you swish that brush in water, you dry it on your paper towel. And don't bang it down, dry it on the side. So this way it keeps its nice point. And I um, mentioned in the beginning of the video when I did the, the cat, which some of you may not have watched, is when you wash your brushes, always swish them in the water. Don't bang them in the bottom of the bowl. And when you're finished, take them to the sink and wash them with soap and they'll last a long time. This way you can use them for other classes or for any time you want to paint on your own. Now I find that the brown doesn't cover completely in some areas, so right now I'm just backtracking and going over it. I'm trying to get a little better coverage. But it dries very, very fast. If you put it on properly and you smooth out all those ridges, when you first put your brush down, you get a lot of ridges in the paint. And you want to go in different directions to smooth it out. I'll kind of give you an idea here. So if you put your brush down like that, you see the brush, how wet this is here? Well, you want to go in different directions to smooth it out and go as far as you can go with it before you dip for more paint. Make sure you spread it out. By spreading it out, that allows it to dry. You're almost drying it with the brush by spreading it out. Okay, now it's still a little wet. You can see the shine on it, but that will dry faster than if you left a big blob on there. Another way to apply color if you wanted to do something similar to a poodle, is um, to do it in white or black, and then get a sponge, a sponge with like a holy, a, a pretty holy sponge that's not, the, the cut in it is not too tight, and put your color out on a tile. You could pick up the black or the white and put it out on a tile or a piece of foil. If you don't have a palette, a piece of foil works well as a palette to put your paints on. And pick up the sponge and put a little bit of the paint in it you know, dampen the sponge, wring it out really, really, really tight. You do not want a wet, dripping sponge. So keep a paper towel near you and make sure that you blot all the water out of the sponge. And then pick up a little bit of color 
blot it out on your towel a little bit and then kind of sponge some color on and it'll look like hairy like a like a poodle is so that's another way of applying color also okay so i've got my brown on and i have pretty good coverage you can always go back like at the end of your piece and you see spots you don't like you can always touch up if you go out of the lines and you want you don't like what you did Make sure that what you painted that you don't like is very dry, and then you can go back over it with your base coat again with the color that you chose. But always make sure your color is dry before you try to go over it with another color, or it, you'll have a mess and it'll all bleed together. So pull it out, make sure your colors are dry, and this is almost completely dry already. Okay, so now I'm gonna wash my brush. And again, I don't know if I showed you, but swish it. I don't bang it in the bottom of the bowl. I swish it in the water. Use my fingers to take it out of some of the, this is called the ferrules of the brush. And I try to push some of the color out until I could take it to the sink and wash it with soap and water. Okay, so now um, I think I'm gonna do the white next. Put a little bit of white on that snout and then the black and the pink will go over it. Okay, so you need very, very little of the white, a little drop. And uh, I think I'm gonna use my flat brush for that. You can use whichever brush you're comfortable with. I'm gonna use the flat brush. And it's okay if it gets where the, uh, no the nose is gonna go, the black, that's okay. Now what you can do is, you can, again, you can use your small brush to do the edge, to get a nice line around the edge. And I think I just use this brush for the whole thing. Put this one back in the water. And paint that snout white. And you don't have to go where the lip is, over here. Okay, but if it gets on it, don't worry about it. And don't do any dots or anything yet because I want to show you how to do them. Okay, I have the white on there. And so now we're going to do the black. I have black here, so I'm gonna wash my brush out again and again, dry it really well. You don't go into the, the paint with a wet brush, just a damp brush. And we'll do the ears and the feet, paws. Okay, so we'll do the paws. I'll do the paws first. And see if you can see as I'm painting. And again, I'm using the big brush but it might be a good idea to use the smaller brush to edge around the body. a little bit more black and paint all four of his paws. It might be easier with the, the round brush. I keep starting out with the flat brush and then I go to the round brush. So you use whatever you're comfortable with. And don't leave your brushes laying out on the table with paint in them for even five minutes. Always get them wet in water because as fast as the paint dries on the piece, it dries in the hairs of the brush and then you'll, it's very hard to get it out and then your brushes will stiffen up and you won't be able to use them again in the future. So learn how to take care of your brushes. It's really important to take care of your brushes. third one I'm 
Okay, I have all four of his paws done. Now, it might be a little hard to put it down right now because some of the black goes over the edge, so I'm gonna hold it up in the air while I do his ears, just to let that dry. Now, you don't have to do what I'm doing. If you're, you have a dog and it doesn't have black ears, don't do it. But I'm just gonna be doing the piece the same way I did the sample. But you'll be able to adjust and do whatever colors you'd like. little dog and cat. They're called pudgy, pudgy animals. They, the company's made them in so many different designs. We have owls and elephants and penguins and so many different ones. And the cat and dog are my favorite. So I think people can relate to the cat and the dog. Okay, there's one ear done. And let's do the other ear. Just take your time. There's no rush. Take your time with your pieces and enjoy what you're doing. I'm getting there. Almost finished with his ears. Then we just have to do his nose and his eyes. And his little tongue. Like I said, I'm, I'm not rushing you with this. I just want to go over everything. And then you can take your time with it and pause the video at any time and come back to it. I have other videos up on YouTube also that you can look at. Okay, we got that done. Okay, so now I'm gonna do his nose. Of course, you see I have paint all over me too, so that's why I say keep a paper towel handy and wipe your hands because once you get that paint on your hands and you pick him up, you're gonna get it all over the piece, so just be careful. But if that happens, just wait and go back and touch it up once it's dry. I'm going to do his nose. Okay, I have his nose done. Um, before I do his eyes and the dots and the lines around his snout, I'm gonna rinse my brush and do the pink on his mouth. You also have a tail. You can do your tail in black too. I didn't do it, but you can do your tail in black. See, this guy has his tail in black, okay? And you could do anything else you like. If you want polka dots on him, you could do that. And, um, I will show you how to do that. So now I'm just gonna do his tongue in pink. Use the pointy brush, it gets in to that little groove there. Okay, see, it's a little pink. It's a little different pink than I gave you, but that's what I had out here right now. Any pink works. Okay, so now we're gonna use the pointy brush and I'm gonna do the line in between his uh, down from his nose to his mouth. Just give him some definition. Don't do the dots yet, because I'm going to show you how to do the dots. Okay, so I did that. Now, with the dots, you're going to take the handle of your brush. I use the square brush, the flat brush. And... 
you use the handle, this part, this part of the brush, not the hair, it's the handle. And you dip it into the black paint, just like so. And we're gonna do his, his eyes. You know, all you do is put a dot. Where's his other eye? Oh, here we go. And a dot. See, at the back end of the brush, you get a perfect circle. And then you can also do the little dots around his snout. One, I did four of them, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There we go. Now he has a twin, okay? There's the twins. Okay, so here's the dogs and here's the cats. Put them on this side. And those are the pieces that we painted today. All right, so like I said, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to email me. You have my email in the instructions. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for taking this class and picking up these kits at the library and welcoming, welcoming me into your home. So thank you so much. I hope you all have a very, very, very happy Thanksgiving and uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.